The 2019 Formula 1 season is almost here and it is going to be, by the looks of it, a very, very interesting one. As not only do we have new regulations, but the cars seem to have closed up a lot. And there are plenty of interesting storylines that we're going to analyse in today's video. But just what can we expect in 2019 from all of these teams? Well, to find that out, make sure to check out this video. So let's start off with the world champions, Mercedes, who are hoping to make it six in a row of winning the drivers and constructors titles. But this is probably going to be the hardest season for them to do that because Ferrari have come up with their best car since the new turbo era began. And the Mercedes car compared to 2018 is not as good compared to the Ferrari currently right now. And if they are going to win a 6th driver's title and constructor's title in a row, they are going to have one massive fight to do that. But do not underestimate this team as they have overcome big challenges before. Such as Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel in 2017 and also 2018. And it would be very foolish to rule this team out because they are still the strongest team in F1. And in terms of success, they are still dominating the sport. Now the Mercedes car right now is not looking that good. And from what I saw at the second test personally, the Mercedes car to me looks to be about a quarter of a second behind Ferrari. Which of course for this team is not quite good enough. But this team does tend to start off a bit slow and gets better as the season goes on. And that's exactly what I expect from this team. I don't think they're going to be that great in, say, the first four or five races. But once we get to the end of the European part of the season and into the final few races, this team will be very strong, especially in the championship. So that is another very important reason to not count this team out even if they do not have the best car. But if you are going to stop Mercedes, how exactly do you go about doing so? Well let's start off first with the car. Currently you have to expose their issues with the front end of the car, the tyres and outdo them when it comes to power. First off with the front end of the car, the Mercedes has not been as good as the Ferrari in this area for 2 or 3 years. And in 2019 so far it looks to be especially bad compared to Ferrari. But part of that might be down to the different concepts that both teams have gone with with their new 2019 front wings. For example Mercedes's front wing doesn't look as aggressive as Ferrari's does. And at the second test when watching the Mercedes car in corners where the front end was very very important. They weren't doing as well on the front end of the car, they were having to turn in a bit more to certain corners. Meanwhile Ferrari have gone for a different and more radical looking concept. A concept that also Alfa Romeo have on their car. And when watching the car at the second test it looked a lot easier for the Ferrari car to turn in to the slower corners that require good front end grip. Whilst again the Mercedes was not doing as well. Then we come to the tyres and this is an area which actually Mercedes are actually making progress on. As they came up with a new wheel hub innovation to limit the amount of temperature that goes through the tyres and the wheel. But there are still reports from testing that they are still struggling with the tyres in terms of temperature. And this is an area which Ferrari has picked on and actually exploited both in 2017 and 2018 as there were some races where Ferrari won based on having better tyre wear, or being able to get more out of the tyres at certain tracks. And it seemed as though in pre-season testing at the circuit to Catalonia, the Ferrari was doing exactly that. And that will be an important area during the battle in 2019. And also the only reason I'm mentioning Ferrari when it comes to stopping Mercedes is because they are the only team in my opinion who can do that. Realistically, I don't think Red Bull can beat them in the championship. The only team I see beating the Silver Arrows is Ferrari. And another important area for Ferrari to try and beat Mercedes is the power units. Now in 2018, Ferrari came out of that season having the best engine on the grid. 
and it was the first time in this new V6 turbo era that someone other than Mercedes had the best power unit. And with the way Formula 1 is at the moment, that is a very, very important area. You can have a fantastic chassis and fantastic aero as Red Bull have proved, but if you don't have the power, you can't compete. And by the looks of it in testing, Ferrari certainly do have the power. And to be honest, I think Ferrari are on top of Mercedes in all of these areas when it comes to the car. So looking very good for the Scuderia. Now let's move on to the drivers. Now from a Ferrari driver point of view, these are the three things you have to do to beat their drivers. You have to build an early point gap to Lewis Hamilton and also utilise the advantages that your car has. And on track, do not pick the wrong fights with certain types of drivers. Beating Lewis Hamilton in 2019 is going to be very hard even if you do have slightly the faster car. As was proven in 2018 where Ferrari at plenty of races had a faster car but Lewis Hamilton many times still came out on top. Now the likely challenger to Lewis Hamilton's championship is Sebastian Vettel. So what can a driver like him do to beat Lewis in 2019? Well again you have to build an early point gap to Lewis Hamilton just like Nico Rosberg did in 2016. And that was one big maybe not secret of Nico's success was that he was able to build such a gap in the first four races. Now I'm not saying Sebastian has to do something like that but if he can win say four of the first five or three of the first five races he will have the mental advantage over Lewis Hamilton. As Ferrari do have the faster car and also he will be a lot more confident than Lewis is in his machinery. So building an early point gap is very, very important if you want to beat Hamilton. And also utilising everything your car has is so, so important. And that's partly why Lewis Hamilton beat Sebastian Vettel in 2018. It's because Vettel did not utilise everything that his car had. Whilst Lewis Hamilton did the absolute best he could with what he had. So getting the best out of your car is absolutely vital for Ferrari's drivers in 2019. But also, do not get into the wrong fights with the wrong types of cars or drivers. This is something that did cost Vettel a lot in 2019. Many of the accidents he had with other drivers were with drivers that were not competing for the championship and were drivers that you should really avoid. For example, Max Verstappen at Suzuka, Daniel Ricciardo at the US Grand Prix and Valtteri Bottas at France. Try to not pick fights with those kinds of drivers because, again, they're not in the title fight. Try to, if you can, pick fights with the people that actually are competing for the title. Because a driver like Max Verstappen or Daniel Ricciardo doesn't have anything to lose really. And that's something that made Lewis Hamilton so unbeatable, I guess, in 2018. Was that when he did, say, pick fights of people that weren't in the title fight, he was aggressive but not overly aggressive because he knew they weren't in the championship fight with him. Think back to his battle with Kimi Raikkonen at the Italian Grand Prix. So of course, if you are in a fight on track with a driver that's not as fast and is not in the title fight, try and get past for sure. But don't be overly aggressive when you don't have to. Only do that with the people you are directly competing against. And finally, let's go on to team personnel. First off, you need to develop and improve the car as the season goes on. Also be able to manage those very difficult situations. And keep the confidence flowing during the season as well. In a title fight, it is very, very important to develop the car and improve the car pace-wise as the season goes on. And it is something Mercedes have done a lot better than Ferrari in 2017 and also 2018. For example, in the first half of 2017, Mercedes had six wins and also another six wins in the second half of that season. And then in 2018, Mercedes didn't have a great first half of the season with only three wins. But then they developed very well and improved for the second half of the season and won six races. That is how you progress during a season. Meanwhile, Ferrari in that time didn't do that. 
In the first half of 2017, they had three wins, but then in the second half of 2017, they only had two. And then in 2018, in the first half of that season, they had four wins, and then another two wins in the second half of 2018. You have to improve as the season goes on. You can't just rely on having a very good first half of the season because in the second half of the season, that is where the pressure really ramps up. And normally teams who go on to win a championship perform better in the second half of a season than they do in the first half. So Ferrari have to improve this area if they are going to beat Mercedes. But also for a team managing those very difficult situations is very important. And being able to bounce back from those difficult moments is the hallmark of a great team. Mercedes, who are a great team, have done it quite a few times. But there is a great example of this back in 2018. So of course you guys will remember at Austria in 2018, they retired with both cars. But responded very well to that very difficult moment in the season with three wins. At Hockenheim, Hungary and Monza. Ferrari, however, after that very difficult moment at the German Grand Prix, did not respond well. They only picked up one win in the following five races, and that was at Spa by Sebastian Vettel. As I said a minute ago, the mark of a great team is the ability to bounce back from very difficult moments in a season. And that's exactly what Ferrari did not do after that mistake by Sebastian Vettel at Hockenheim. You cannot let singular moments like that get you down for the next 5 to 10 races. You have to pick yourselves up and try and respond immediately. Something that again, Ferrari did not do. And Ferrari desperately do have to improve that area as well. But also keeping confidence going throughout a team is very important. Because the last thing you want when you're getting into the final few races of a season and a title fight is for your team to be shrinking in confidence. You want your team to grow in confidence and rise to the challenge. That is something that again, Ferrari has not done. You could say that maybe because Mercedes are so experienced at winning titles, that's why they're so confident in the last few races of a season. But this is Ferrari. They should be confident when it comes to winning titles and winning races. That's what Ferrari was built for. And when you get to that part of the season, you cannot shrink in confidence because you are mostly guaranteed to lose. Because the other team you're competing against will expose that and destroy you. So I think what we've learned here is that except for the car, Ferrari had plenty of things to work on against Mercedes. Ferrari I think do have the better car, but when it comes to confidence and the driving, there is plenty they can do better than the other team. But of course we can't expect Ferrari to be perfect in all these areas and this Mercedes team is still going to be very hard to beat. Even if Ferrari win the title in 2019, Mercedes are going to give it one hell of a fight. So expect this team from Brackley to fight tooth and nail from race 1 until race 21. But now let's move on to Ferrari and talk about their prospects a bit more than we were talking about them versus Mercedes. From what I saw at testing, Ferrari do have the best car. And it should be their most competitive season since the V6 Turbo era began. And this season really should produce a championship. Because the car is looking great and it does look like the car overall to beat. But there is one thing that internally at Ferrari is going to be very difficult to manage. And that is the situation between Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel. There is no longer a clear number one and number two driver at Ferrari. Vettel and Leclerc should be equal in that team. And I think personally they will be equal in that team. But what can a driver like Charles Leclerc do to beat Sebastian Vettel in 2019? And that is, by the way, very possible. Well, there is one example that does make that possibility look a bit easier than it actually is. The example of Lewis Hamilton versus Fernando Alonso at McLaren in 2007. Now the reason Lewis Hamilton was so competitive against Fernando that season was because he got ahead early in 2007. For example, after four races, the rookie was only two points ahead of the reigning world champion. 
And at the time, that was so impressive and surprising. And then by race 8, he was 14 points clear. And you have to remember, it was during the days where you only got 10 points for a win. So the gap there was massive at the time. And for me, that example does prove that Charles Leclerc can beat Sebastian Vettel. All he has to do is start off very fast out of the blocks and really get under Vettel's skin early on. Because if he is ahead of Vettel in the championship, say, seven or eight races in, his chances, of course, of beating Vettel are a lot better, but also for another reason. Because if after eight or nine races Leclerc is ahead of Vettel, Ferrari may start to shift their focus onto Charles Leclerc. And that for Leclerc would be very, very beneficial. And if you look at when Sebastian Vettel went up against Daniel Ricciardo, if you do unsettle Sebastian early on, he is more unlikely to respond if, say, it was against Lewis Hamilton or Fernando Alonso. So if Charles Leclerc wants to beat Vettel this season, the first half of the season is very, very important. He cannot do what he did in 2018 and start off slow. He has to start very fast. Now, I don't know if he will start off the season very fast, but don't be surprised if he does. Because I'm sure he does have a plan of how to beat Vettel in 2019. But in 2019 for the Ferrari team, this should be their best chance to win a championship since they last won the championship in 2008. And boy, has it been a long time since then. We're now talking a decade since they actually last won a championship. That is way too long for a team like Ferrari. But now with Maurizio Riva Bene gone from the team and Matteo Bonotto, the new team principal of Ferrari, can they actually win it this year? For me, there is no doubt they can win it this year, but we've said that before. But maybe with Bonotto at the helm, they can actually do it this time. Because if you look at their progress since 2015, he also does have a big part to play as he made massive gains for that team from 2014 to 2015 and basically beyond. And that has saw the rise of Ferrari since 2015, as basically every season, if you count out 2016, has been an improvement. But I do want to make this one point clear as I leave off with Ferrari. If Ferrari, with their drivers also, do not win the championship, 2019 has been a failure full stop. No excuses, no nothing. If Ferrari don't win the championship, it has been a failure and they deserve massive criticism. They've had two great chances at winning the championship. They cannot blow it for a third year in a row. They are the biggest team in F1. They have the best driver lineup on the grid and probably the best car on the grid. And if they don't win the championship, I don't see how you can possibly make an excuse for them not winning. For this team in 2019, they have to aim to win everything. Anything below first is a failure. Because with the car they have and the driver lineup they have, if they don't win it this year, are they ever going to win it? I certainly hope that they finally do break their duck. But now let's move on to Red Bull Honda, who had quite an interesting and also very good testing in Barcelona. The car was mostly reliable and it looked pretty good. The only thing they're really lacking in compared to, say, Ferrari is power. But that's basically the story of Red Bull's life ever since 2014. But this year really could be different because Honda seem to be going in a better direction than Renault when it comes to the engine side. As Honda in 2018 started off with the worst power unit and then by the end of 2018 had a better one compared to Renault. So things again are looking up. It hasn't been perfect though as Pierre Gasly did have a couple of crashes and one of them did have an effect on Max Verstappen's running on the final day of testing but mostly in terms of the pace of the car and the reliability it was good. But for me when it comes to this team there's only one big question in regards to say 2018. Is Pierre Gasly and Honda an upgrade on Daniel Ricciardo and Renault? Let's start off with the drivers and when it comes to a comparison where we can't really make one. As 2018 was Pierre Gasly's first real season in F1 and Daniel Ricciardo has been in F1 since 2011. 
and this is likely to be the first time Gasly has been in a top car. But from what I've seen, I don't think Gasly can ever really be an upgrade on Daniel Ricciardo. I don't think he will be as quick. I don't think he is obviously going to be as good of an overtaker. But also, I don't think he does have that very, very good skill that Ricardo does have, which is being very opportunistic. For example, whenever Daniel Ricardo saw the opportunity for a podium finish, which was unlikely, or a race win, for example, like Baku in 2017, he went and got it. With Pierre Gasly, it seems to me more that he needs the car to be working more so than for him to be properly working at that track. He is a good driver, do not get me wrong, but I don't think he quite is as good as Daniel Ricciardo. And I don't think he ever will be as good as Daniel Ricciardo. So I don't think that is an upgrade. But when it comes to power, I think Red Bull, in hindsight, have made the right decision. As again, during 2018, Renault got worse and Honda got better. And Honda do seem to be making more developments on their power unit than Renault have in the last couple years. And also Honda are putting a lot more money into their power unit than Renault are. And now there seems to be a better working relationship between Red Bull and Honda than there was between Red Bull and Renault. So when it comes to the engine side, I think in hindsight, Red Bull will have made the right decision. Whether they'll be able to win a championship with Honda, who knows? You do have to remember that Honda Power has only won one race in F1 in the 21st century. And that was at a very chaotic 2006 Hungarian Grand Prix. So the chances are not great, but right now, honestly, I think the chances are better with Honda than they would be with Renault. Plus, I think Renault want to focus more on their works team, so I don't think Renault would really care about Red Bull if they were still partners. But in 2019, I do think this team is a dark horse, and I also think the power unit is going to improve a lot as 2019 goes on. So don't be surprised if this team wins some races and maybe more races than you're thinking. But now let's go into the midfield. And let's start off with Renault, who had a decent preseason testing. They didn't show as much pace as I really thought they should have. The car didn't look amazing, but it did look good. But right now, in the pecking order, it's about the same as it was at the start of 2018. But because now they have a better driver lineup, and also Renault seems to be putting more money into their project for 2019. 2019 should be a better year of development than it was in 2018 for this team. Because even though they finished 4th in 2018, it wasn't the greatest season. As they were a bit lucky that Haas didn't take that from them because basically Haas are too inexperienced. So they should develop better than they did in 2018, but they do have a bit more competition now in the midfield. As now you do have the strong Alfa Romeo outfit. But really for Renault in 2019, the goal has to be to close the gap to the top teams and finish P4 in the Constructors. If they can do both of that, it's been a successful season. But if they somehow do not finish P4 in the Constructors, this season has been a failure. They have to now start motoring towards the top teams. As I am afraid there's no real excuse for this team to be hanging around in the midfield for too long. Now let's move on to McLaren who had a dreadful 2018. But in testing their car seemed to look a bit better than it was at the end of 2018. So maybe 2019 will be a better season but honestly I don't think it is going to be massively better. I don't think they're going to finish in P6 and the Constructors again. I just don't think that is really possible. But pace wise, hopefully they have learned their lessons and they're not going to develop so horribly as they did last season. But all McLaren need to look for in 2019 is progress. As long as they make progress, not necessarily when it comes to position in the constructors, but more to do with, say, pace, then their season has been a somewhat success. But if they don't make progress, then I don't really know where this team goes. Slowly but surely, start making progress, and then maybe eventually you'll be able to get back to where you do as a team in terms of history deserve to be. But it is going to be a long road, and 2019 is going to be a very tough one for McLaren. 
Now let's move on to Alfa Romeo, who are looking a lot better than they were 12 months ago when they were Sauber. About a year ago, they had one of the slowest cars on the grid. Fast forward a year, and they maybe do have the best car in the midfield. And with the driver lineup they do have and the car they seem to have going into 2019, this is going to be good for this team. As Kimi Raikkonen is, I think, going to have a good season and is also going to help develop this team as the season goes on, which is something he is very good at. The only worry for this team is that Renault are probably going to outdevelop them and also Antonio Giovinazzi might be a weak spot for this team. As when it comes to F1, he is inexperienced and can be sometimes a bit of a hothead. So as long as he can get the best out of himself and really prove why he should be on the grid, this should be a, a successful season for this team. And for me, a success in 2019 for Alfa Romeo would be a top 5 finish in the Constructors. And that would really showcase the progress made by this team who used to be Sauber. Now let's go to Haas who just missed out on P4 in the Constructors last season. Now let's be honest, we're not expecting them to be as good in 2019. But considering they've only been in F1 as a team since 2016, they don't necessarily have to be in the top 5 in the Constructors yet again. They do need to be, say, as competitive as they were at times in 2018. But I don't think necessarily... They need to be right there with Renault and Alfa Romeo like maybe some people are expecting. Again, this team is quite small and they haven't been in F1 very long. And it's only natural after a very good season last season for them to drop back. So for me in 2019, a success for them would be a top 6 Constructors finish. And would showcase that even though the team have dropped back in terms of Constructors position, they certainly are not going away and that they're going to continue to fight for many more years to come now let's go on to Toro Rosso who coming into 2019 I didn't really think anything of them I didn't think they really had anything to fight for this season but it seems as though they maybe do as the car was a bit better than I was expecting in testing and it looked pretty good and the drivers so far seem to be pretty happy and the drivers are also going a bit under the radar. As both of these drivers do also have a bit of a point to prove as Danny Kvyat we know as the Torpedo. As long as he can try his best to drop that name with some good results he should have a good year. And what Alexander Albon has to do is somehow beat his more experienced and most likely better teammate in Danny Kvyat. As I've seen plenty of people saying that Albon is the worst driver on the grid. And for me, that is wrong. This guy is very, very good. And as long as he can keep driving well and the car performs well, he should have a good enough season to stay at Toro Rosso. And not get kicked out for some new kid in 2020. But even though their car was slightly better than I was expecting, don't expect much from Toro Rosso this season. And for the first six or seven races, also don't expect that much from Racing Point. As for the first race in Melbourne, you will see their definite 2019 car. As in testing, it was mostly a 2018 car. So the first five or six races are going to be a lot about development and not necessarily pace. As they have to try and catch up with their other rivals in terms of developing their car as the season goes on. So up until Canada, I'm not expecting this team to be that good. But after Canada, once we go to tracks where they are actually quite competitive, they should start to rise up the field. And once they do learn the car and start to improve the car once we get into the proper European season, they certainly do have a point to prove. But the word point is not going to be mentioned at all when it comes to Williams also known as the Toothpaste Team or Colgate F1 or Insert Toothpaste Company here. This team at this point is basically a joke. They have the worst team principal on the grid, no technical director, an absolute dog of a car that looks like it's towing a caravan around a track. They do have the Formula 2 champion, but they also have a driver in Robert Kubica who we're not sure is actually going to be good enough. 
and might have to be replaced if he doesn't do well enough in the first few races. This is how bad it has got for this team, where they're now basically a meme. For Williams this season, I'm expecting plenty of crashes, plenty of moaning about how bad the car is from the drivers, and also I'm expecting maybe a couple races where Williams are having to watch from the grandstand because they haven't made the race. Meaning they fail to qualify because of how bad their car is. If you have any expectations which are remotely positive, drop them. There should be no positive expectations for this team. They're just so crap. And if they actually do get a point in 2019, which I don't think they are going to, we might as well give them an award. Because that is how hard it will be for this team not to be a pile of crap. But anyway guys, that is it for the season preview. And now finally, the season is here. Don't forget guys, I will be live tomorrow morning UK time for a practice to watch along. And we can finally see around Melbourne how the teams are looking going into the first Grand Prix. So don't forget to check that out tomorrow morning, but I finally cannot wait for this season to get going. So we can see who is going to win the midfield battle, who is going to surprise us all, and who is going to win the Drivers and Constructors title. Personally, I think Lewis Hamilton will win the Drivers and Ferrari will win the Constructors. But I'm sure with some predictions, I am going to be wrong. But to be honest, I don't really care who wins in 2019. As long as the racing is better, that is all I care about. And if it is better than 2018, then well, strap yourselves in for another great Formula 1 season.